Doctor, now you can do it. Jose, you got one more round, baby. Come on. Come on, Toro. Come on, Torito. 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 Come
there's more bigger shows than ever before. It depends on what yes. titles really mean. And a good fight's a good fight, and that, it doesn't matter what they're fighting for. Like Canelo, Canelo and Golot, they doesn't need a belt. It's kind of a throwback fight, that one. That's good there from Kinoshita, they're having a little bit of success. Not enough to win in the round. Just slow down, just, a, just only a tiny little bit here. And Kai Hesler, when they're ready, just trying to get a bit more power in the punches. It's the defending IBF super flyweight champion. That's good. It's all to do with the feet. You know, to get him in out of range. It's a good left hand. With the cuts, I think it was, it was almost boom, that's a good shot. Borderline panic when the, the cut really, yeah. a, a load of blood, yeah. But the swelling no longer quite the issue. To come forward. Gotta keep those stabbing round the target. Make the guy. That's sure to be somebody who they're looking at potentially. Maybe. Yeah. No, no, he's a bantamweight right now, but. Oh, lovely shot. Well, that's the problem he's having. Fifth round. Oh, dear. Head rocked. Sixth round. Well, for Kenoshita, what he needs something that needs pace. He needs more pace in his work. I don't think he has it. No, but I think he's willing, he's willing to have a... He's happy to have a change, but I just, he hasn't got that pace to close the gap. The reactions are too slow. And, and all you can hope now, all you can bank on now is... Anchor. He had that one round, didn't he? Was it the third or the fourth? So he just signs that he was slowing slightly, but he's back into it. I think he, he looked like he was slowing. I think he was trying to plan... Nice little one through there, and again there. There's a whole lot more of them. <laughs> Japanese corner is one of the most vociferous corners I've heard from. Oh, lovely. Doing yeah. They're just making Kinoshita fall short, and then rallying him with a combination. Shot. That was a better shot, though, that left hook. There from Kinoshita. Could he be about to take his first round? Maybe not. <laughs> Look, he, he's, done, he's done well, he has a, a lot of more... Anka has, the Filipino is winning by an absolute lance. Oh, he shot. That's better from Kinoshita. Could have done with that about five or six rounds ago. Questioning Kinoshita's fighting heart. Oh, great shot, body shot. So the left hand over the top, digs down to the body shot, and that was it. That's a beautiful place, it really is. It's a little tap of the... Kinoshita was already, before the, the damage to the eye, was already a, a step behind the champion. Now has been knocked out of him. Right. The fight might as the referee indeed has done precisely that on his challenger, Tyro Kinoshita. won that round that would be scored 9-9 without the point deduction that is sixth round it's a 12 rounder of course the championship distance he's looking at the corner Jamie Connor's corner they want him to come forward He's got to avoid that jab, hasn't he? Anka has very good with the straight shots as well. Straight jab, long, straight left hand. Down he goes again. Right hand this time. Conlon thinks it was round the back of the head, but it was more on the side of the head. Looking a little bit bemused, and he stopped it. It's all over. A brave effort ends there. A one-sided fight. Anka has just too much. It was a step up in class, a step up in class, and it was just a step too far for the gallant, brave Jamie Conlon. A third defence of the title for Jerwin Anka has, and he's still champion of the world. And Conlon, I'm afraid to say, just found that he just hadn't got the armoury tonight. No, he didn't. I think um, in that opening round, in the very first knockdown, he didn't seem to recover from it. It was a little bit of a mystery, delayed reaction. We still don't really know what the injury was, but I think it affected...
Max Manny Pacquiao, the Filipino world champion at 150. Day. We're tonight. Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated is proud to present live on ESPN an evening of world championship boxing for your entertainment. All about sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Registration. The three judges scoring this first title fight, Lisa Jampa, Joel Elizondo, and Fernando Villarreal, and inside the ring in charge of the action, World Championship veteran referee, Rafael Ramos. And now from Corpus Christi, Texas, let's get this party started! 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF. Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver, red, black, and white. Officially weighing in at 114 pounds with a record of 20 victories, including eight wins by knockout. Only one defeat from Cabo San Lucas, Baja, California, Sur, Mexico. The challenger, Israel Giga. opponent across the ring, represented by Joven Promotions and MP Promotions, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red and white, officially weighing in at 114.7 pounds. An excellent record also, 26 victories, 18 wins by knockout, only one defeat with one draw. He's the super flyweight fighting pride of the Philippines, the reigning, defending IBF. Super flyweight champion of the world, Jerry Pretty Boy Ankahi. As the Filipino flag proudly flies in the corner of Jerwin and Cajas, Rafael Ramos will be the third man inside the ropes for this title fight. This 115 pound division lately in boxing has been red hot. You receive the pre fine instruction, receive the instructions. Protect yourself, protect it all the time. Give me a clean fight, una pelea limpia. Buena suerte, good luck. Well, glad to have two division world champion Timothy Bradley with us ringside. Tim, what do you like about Jerwin and Cajas? Oh, I love and en Cajas. I love the fact that he's always on balance. He's very mechanical, good left jab, or right jab, I should say, because he is a softball, and good power and high IQ. Very sharp. There go that jab I just mentioned. Really good jab to the head and the body. It's also a very long jab. It's a strong jab. It's not one of them flicking jabs that, jabs that we all constantly see from other fighters. It's a strong, stiff jab. With purpose to it, and Higo Gonzalez, his first fight outside of Mexico. He turned pro at just 18 years old. Started boxing at 10 years old when a local neighborhood girl took him to the gym and said, try it out. He did okay for himself. He's in a world championship fight right now. He also thinks he's been typecast going into this fight by Jerwin. See what the champ can do with a minute 50 here to work with. As Gonzalez back on his feet, probing with that jab, trying to show him something. Wide sweeping punch from Agas. Looking for that home run early. Here's a straight left that splits the guard. Yeah, I believe when Caja stepped on Gonzalez's foot. He's a little bit off balance. It was a great shot, but I think he was off balance because he stepped on his foot. Let's we'll take a look here at the end of round number one. That happens most of the time when a right hander is fighting a left handed hander because their lead foots are lined up to with one another. That's a great point, something to look for as you look at the left foot of Gonzalez and the right foot of Ancajas. Southpaw versus orthodox matchup. Who can get the position to the outside or will they be always going toe to toe as you see them coming forward right there from Gonzalez? Jerwin said he expected a straight ahead 
Mexican fighter, Gonzalez says, hey, I'm a counter puncher. He comes straight ahead. He's perfect for me. I don't think that early knockdown, however, is going to diminish any of the Manny Pacquiao comparison. It looks like, it honestly looks like Gonzalez is basically being patient right now. He's standing in front, got hit with a left hook, a left right, a left hand right there. But it looks like he's looking to counter in Cajas. What a great start to our night here of top ranked boxing on ESPN. Two world title fights, and we start off with power in the very first one. Iga Gonzalez having to get up off the canvas as the champ. The IBF Junior Bantamweight World Champion came out targeting him in round number one here. All right, Timmy, let's watch for the foot here. You threw it. Here you go, and Cajas leans in, ducks down, slips. There it is. No, you know what? It don't even look like he stepped on his foot. It was actually on the outside of his foot. You know, the, the feet were next to each other. Next but that was just a clean, it was a clean wash. Left hand Look. stage manyisms in the ring. Honestly, German just needs to focus on winning fights. That's it. The, the relation with Pacquiao is because it's, he's Pacquiao, Pacquiao, Pacquiao is his promoter, but he just needs to just focus on winning fights. He's no Manny Pacquiao, eight division world champion. He's it's his first world championship that he's won. Give him a little time. He just uh, cracked me to the right. It's so easy to make those Pacquiao comparisons. He's humble. He never says anything about his opponent. He's the southpaw from the Philippines. He's active. He's quick. And he is talented. Come on. We said that about Donaire. Come on now. Go, right. Tim, if I may, there's one respect in which he is very much like Manny Pacquiao. Pretty boy Jerwin, as he likes to be called, has a great smile, and it masks an absolute ferocity in the ring. Very good point. Pacquiao's company promotes him in conjunction now with Bob Arum in top rank. Arum was so impressed with Encajas when he went down to Australia and saw him fight, and then unbelievable reports of what he was able to easily do in dismissing his next opponent in a title defense and now fighting under the top rank brand. I can tell you what, one thing that Encajas does well, and he stole it from Manny Pacquiao. He leans to that right and he lets that left hand go. Every time, Encaja, uh, every time Gonzalez throws that jab, you'll see it every now and then. Look for the left hand down the pipe. He'll lean to his right. It's a Manny Pacquiao punch. It's actually a signature punch. Both guys talk about training in jungle-like conditions. Jerwin and Cajas actually trains in a jungle. Literally. <laughs> That's, That's what he, he calls it. a survival camp, right? Our gymnasium, yeah. Guys look, sleep, sparring partners sleep on the ring. Look for the right hook of and Cajas against Gonzalez. Gonzalez keeps dropping that left hand. He's just off the mark a little bit, but just, just wait. I think, the, I think that punch, the right hook, will land when Cajas sooner or later. Of course, that right hook from that southpaw stance is sitting right on top of him as he splits the guard again, does in Cajas. Another thing that Cajas does, similar to Manny Pacquiao, he has that one-two. And I mean, he puts a lot behind that one-two. That straight jab and that, that left hand right behind it. Quick and accurate, like Manny Pacquiao. There are some similarities, I see, as far as skill. Oh, now you're back on my side. <laughs> oh, listen, listen. <laughs> listen, it's a great marketing tool. If you want to be labeled the yeah. next Manny Pacquiao, go for it, my man. Promote all you want. Good start here in this title fight for the champ. Jerwin and Cajas scored the knockdown in round number one and has flashed moments here in the second round. Two. It says, Presto a dar muerte, puesto a recibirla. Ready to take a life, ready to give my life. He's got a rose on the left side of his chest for his dad, a rose on the right side for his mom. And he says, I take it as I would take a life for them, and I would give my life for them. I also feel that way when I step into the ring. Bernardo, we just saw the 21-year-old Higa Gonzalez from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, really hit the accelerator here at the start of round number three. Got up off the canvas in the first round. He has overcome adversity in his home life back home in Mexico month. His father went to jail when he was 15 years old. He began his pro career without him. Dad went away for homicide. He came back in September. 
and his son was already a top contender. He was reunited. The boy lived with his dad when he went away. And in his absence, his dad was the guy who kept bringing him to the gym. He fell to drugs and alcohol. He's like, in some respect, the guy we're going to see in the main event tonight, Zerto Ramirez, he says, boxing saved me. The question now is, can boxing save him from Jerwin and Cajas? The youngest of 10 children is Gonzalez. Gonzalez seems like he's having a little success this round. He really is, especially with that right hand moments ago, Timmy. He's applying, he's applying his pressure. He came out the gate real fast, changed the tempo on that Cajas, and he's looking like he's having a little success with that right hand. Far better round here for Higa Gonzalez. Of course, in the hole early with a 10-8 round for Encajas. As that big left hand scored the knockdown to start our evening here. And there he comes with the left hand again. Got to be careful pulling straight back. Yeah, Gonzalez has a habit of standing straight back. Step pulling straight back after a combination. And he also has a, a habit of just standing right in front of a guy. Not throwing a feint, not doing anything. And the Cajas is taking advantage of him by just throwing that jab and that left hand right behind him. I hate to seize on the Manny Pacquiaoism, but uh, he's hit him with a couple one two. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh, good snapping southpaw jab from the champ right there as the head of Gonzalez went back. It's interesting, we like the work rate of Gonzalez early on in this third round, but this final minute of round number three, and Cajas back to hitting his stride. He needs to apply more pressure. That's what he needs to do. He needs to let his hands go a little bit more. And that is Gonzalez I'm talking about. He wants to have success. Good action here in round number three as Gonzalez mounts a comeback and Ancajas responds. Us, the Filipino sensation who opens up round number four the way he opened up the fight with a one-two and a thudding straight left hand. That, that is because Gonzalez pulls straight back with his hands down and Jerwin has a high IQ. He sees that. He steps right in with that one-two and it lands every single time. CompuBox total punches. You see the advantage for Encajas. Bernardo has been listening into the corner. What can you tell us? Joven Jimenez said, I want Druin to throw shorter punches, but more combinations. That's going to be the key. Joven like jo is teaching Jerwin to be Jerwin. When he came in, he was a Manny Pacquiao imitator. He'd been watching television in the Philippines. This is the fighter he imitated. And he's teaching him to be himself now. But let me suggest one other thing. At 115 pounds, even Manny Pacquiao didn't quite know he was Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Jerwin looks good with that jab. That jab is setting up everything for Jerwin. And he nice, claims, strong jab. He claims so much real estate with it, too. Yes, he does. He moves, him, he moves his body back. He moves him out of his back with that, with those jabs. You know, Timmy, and I know you study the game and the history of it, but he reminds me of one of the well-said axioms in boxing, that once you become a champion, you become actually a better fighter. Yes. He's the kind of fighter that when I look at him, and you see what he was just two years ago, gets yes. the belt around his waist, makes a title defense, every time out seemingly better. It's always about confidence with fighters. If you have a lot of confidence, you'll go a long way in this sport. And winning the world championship, that builds a lot of confidence in the fighter. And you have something to defend. And that's what he's doing right now, defending that title. You can see moments here where Gonzalez is very willing for the exchanges as he was looking to sit on that counter right hand. He made 3,500 bucks for winning that title. The confidence he got from that is priceless. <laughs> In Cajas' payday was 3500 when he first won a belt. That's it. Wow. And he was happy to have it. In a sport and on cards that he's fought on where the headliners are making multi-millions. This is a kid who grew up hungry, not metaphorically hungry, but in point of fact hungry. You know, it could be a banana all day, a piece of fruit, a coconut. And he says, I always remember what it's like to be hungry every time I go in that ring. When he won the championship, he was hungry. End of four. 
total access with five dedicated cameras, dedicated monitors. We're giving you both corners. We're giving you the locker rooms between fights. That'll be going on all night long on Watch ESPN or the ESPN app, and you'll get our commentary and hear that if you are on Around the Ring throughout these two world title fights tonight. Good start for Gonzalez to come forward and press the action a little bit. The title challenger finding confidence against the champ here early on in round five. And that's what you got to do. You got to change the tides now. He lost every round so far. He's coming forward because Gonzalez wants to win this fight. He's acting like a guy who wants to determine his own fate, not just linger and survive and hope. That was a big clash of heads right there. Typical softball against a right-hander. Heads normally clash. Both guys stand right in front of each other. No one's looking for angles or doing anything. I haven't even seen a faint from anyone yet. <laughs> you sitting right in front of a guy, you got a faint. Faint, see what he wants to do. They're both looking for counters. Exactly. Gonzalez is looking for the Marquez counter. He said, if he's Manny Pacquiao, meaning Jerwin, I'm Juan Manuel Marquez. <laughs> Jerwin's still, he's still waiting for that right hook. See that punch right there, that left hand where he slipped to his right? Classic Pacquiao. Classic Pacquiao. Throw your body to the right, but come with the straight left. Yeah, it, it works every time because guess what? You get your head out of the line of fire. And you got your hand right there down the middle. Which is that straight left hand. Young man who first saw Manny fight at 11 years old growing up in the Philippines. Says Pac-Man was his inspiration. Basically did an impersonation of him for most of his career. And now promoted by the 8th Division champion. Good exchange on the inside. Look at Gonzalez's willingness to step into the pocket. And a right hook comes from the champ. Gonzalez is game. He is. He's game. Man, he's showing his strong chin right now. There's a lead left hand that comes studding home on Gonzalez. Short, turned over, right hook, and now he ties up, does he go? That's smart, tying him up, breaking his rhythm. That's smart from Gonzalez. What an entertaining fifth round here. The first of our two world title fights right here. Top rank on ESPN. End of five with 115 pounders. So entertaining. Good exchanges between Encajas and Gonzalez. Mark Kriegel, I find this fight fascinating because on my scorecard right now, I've actually got it a very competitive shutout for Encajas. There are so many rounds where Gonzalez has fielded himself, acquitted himself well. The third round, I love how he pressed early in that fifth round. But at the end of the day, a little more impressed with what's happening with Encajas. I would agree with you. What you have here is a very good game shutout also what you're seeing is one of the virtues of israel gonzalez a couple fights ago he was dropped by a left hook by jonathan padilla in the first round interesting point by you that gonzalez last july 15th suffered a first round knockdown against padilla that was from a left hook he said i was more confident because of it i know i can fight through anything keep on fighting and keep on winning he went down tonight from a left hand from Ancajas. Can he do the same and dig out of the hole? Gonzalez was having, had a good start to the round. He caught Ancajas with some good counters, a good left hook. But right now it seems that he's standing still in one spot for a little bit too long. And German's having his way with him. To me, it begins with that jab. It's long, yes. it controls the action, it, it controls the, the line. Yeah, every, the center line. Every time, every time Gonzalez takes that half a step back and have and Cajas lean forward and lunge forward, that's an opportunity for a counter. He did it in the beginning of the round. He needs to do more of that. He needs to move his head, get his head out of the middle. It was a good counter right moments ago by Gonzalez. But again, you wonder, does he have the power to set Jerwin back to deter him? With eight knockouts, no. He don't have the power. No, that's why we showed it on the tail of the tape. We said, note the difference in power. The champ compared to Gonzalez and the percentage of KOs in their career. Now Jerwin is going back to that stiff jab. He abandoned it for a minute. 
Now he's going back to it and it's working. That jab has been the dominant punch of the entire fight. You know what I need to see more from Encajas? He needs to go down to the body. I don't see it enough. I, 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 he's he's headhunting a whole heck of a lot in this fight. He should go down to the body and test Gonzalez downstairs. Coming to the halfway point of our first world title fight. Good pace being set here. Still to come will be the WBO 168-pound championship fight between Zerto Ramirez, the undefeated Mexican, and Habib Ahmad. Let's listen in to Lawrence Cole moments ago, the referee for that. Zerto Ramirez, history-making fighter, the first Mexican to win a world championship at 168 pounds. That is set to come, but we got things to decide here with the IBF 115-pound championship in the ring right now. Round number seven between Encajas, the prized Filipino, and Gonzalez, the upset-seeking Mexican fighter. Right now, right now, both guys are just pretty much trying to, trying to get a counter out of each other. They're really not doing much, standing right in front of each other. You know, now Cajas is trying to shoot that jab, that laser jab that he has. Nice right hook. Instead of throwing the jab, he come around with that right hook. There go Gonzalez pulling straight back with his hands down. And all Cajas had to do was follow the path that was set. Pull straight back. There he comes with the left hand. Once again, let's check in with our ringside reporter, Bernardo Osuna. In Israel Gonzalez's corner, Alberto Sanchez wants him to be more active, but he wants him also to keep his legs moving, his waist moving, his head moving, and not be a static target. But he wants him to counter and make Ancajas pay. Those are exact words that I've been asking for the whole night. And when he does it, it looks so beautiful. Another left hand from Ancajas. Pulling straight back again. Defensive flaw. There's a right hook from the southpaw champ. And that's because Gonzalez always keeps that left hand low. Wide sweeping punch and then a low left hand from Gonzalez. Had an opportunity that time as Ancajas opened up. Didn't fill the space. And Kahash does have some moves like Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> He's looking for that overhand left hand that Pacquiao landed on Ricky Hatton. He's looking for the Hail Mary punch. Of course, Mark, the guy sitting between us, has defeated Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> he would know best the trilogy with Timothy Bradley, the two-division world champion. I see a big difference. And, uh, let, me, let me play the other side now. Um, Manny would come in in a variety of angles that you really hadn't seen before. This is being fought in a straight line. And that's the way Cajas wants it. Yeah. Cajas has his moments when he when he revs on the gas pedal. He needs to take more chances. But it, Gonzalez, it, it's Gonzalez who's not getting funky at all. He he's using no lateral movement. Oh, well, Gonzalez is looking looking to counter, but he's not doing it right. <laughs> he's, he's looking to counter along that straight line, and that's where Cajas wants the fight to be, on the, on the line of his jab and counter left. I agree. Maybe he can start off by moving his head a little bit. That would help. That jab. Defense 101. Yeah, but that, that's all in the gym. Oh, sharp right hand from Cajas. He can and land one away with that splash of sweat to get the judges' attentions as they're about to put pen to paper at the... And Cajas caught him with that right hook I've been talking about all night. Right hook from the 115-pound IBF world champion, Sherwin and Cajas, making his U.S. debut. The Filipino-born star in America. We've had some through the years, the great Manny Pacquiao, a global superstar. And it was a pilgrimage of sorts with Encajas coming here his first trip to America. He said, I got to go and stop off in L.A. and see the wild card gym and Freddie Roach, where Manny, of course, trained for all the years. I mean, that's his idol. Of course, he wants to see where his idol, you know, a guy that he's followed and, and believed in, a countryman that had the success that he's had. Of course, he wants to go see where, where he lays his head at, at night. And he don't lay his head there. Well, there have when, been when many he's, reports when he's recently <laughs> about the return of Manny Pacquiao. Many, many reports.
strokes. We don't have anything official to tell you yet, but it doesn't take a lot of strokes of the keyboard to find out that there will be a return of Manny Pacquiao on ESPN this spring. Pray tell, Joe, what do you know? That's all I can tell you now, Kriegel. <laughs> Tim, what did Joe know he ain't telling us? I, I, right now, the thing you got to know is that Drew and Cajas isn't going anywhere in the near future at 115 pounds. And there is a lot of talent at 115 as we will further that discussion. There's still a lot of fight left for Gonzalez. He's looking strong right now, but he's uh, having a, a defensive lapse right now, getting caught with everything from Germany. I want to see Jaron rev it up a little bit, change the change the tempo a little bit on, on Gonzalez. That's what I would like to see. I would like to see somebody step outside the shield it's and not, actually attack. It's not like Gon Gonzalez is, is warranting that. Or can he's, con he's controlling the fight as it is. He who controls the jab controls the fight. Look, at he's hitting him almost at will with that long jab. Yeah, but I mean, maybe this is who he is. I get it. I get it. I understand, Mark. But what I'm saying is, who has power? Who has power? And Cajas. Gonzalez don't have a whole lot of power with eight knockouts. But he got a whole lot of chin. He does got a whole lot of chin. But you know how to weaken that chin? You go down to the body. And we don't see it. Well, I'm not seeing a lot from the Cajas down, downstairs at all. Timothy, I will concede your point. Championship on the line. End of eight. Now it's Drewin and Cajas who's looking to forge ahead and continue to make a name as he holds one of the belts and continues to impress. Oh yeah, coming out the gate, that pistol jab. Gonzalez sitting right in front, he's trying to land his jab. It's hard to land a jab against a softball. I don't know why, it's just the, the angle. That's what makes it tough. Here are the total punches being tallied up by CompuBox. 110 to 38 connect advantage for Jerwin and Cajas. And most of those are that stiff jab. That's what I see. Sort of knocked down in round number one. Had the big right hook to finish off the seventh round. And consistent, steady work, accurate work with the jab as well. Very accurate work with the jab. The jab is what's setting up everything for him. I just want him behind that, behind that straight left hand. He should come with that hook. It's open. Now I'm talking about and Cajas. That's what he needs to do. Big left hand from the champ. I might have heard you fake one. He did. <laughs> he did fake one. Something that the Cubans suddenly do. They they be in the middle middle of a combination. They throw. They'll throw, they'll throw their hands halfway out, and then they'll land. They'll land a big shot on you. Another check in with Bernardo. Alberto Sanchez is in the corner talking to his assistant, Raul Garza, and they keep motioning. Why can't he lean left and throw that overhand right, much like Marquez landed on Manny Pacquiao? So there's frustration here in the blue corner. Now, that was one of the signature punches of this generation of boxing. What's the answer, Timothy Bradley? What's the answer? It's not going to be that punch. He doesn't have the power to hurt and Cajas, I believe. I think that he needs to go down, focus downstairs, and I think he needs to actually tackle a little bit more, take a little bit more chances. You know, to beat a softball, Horn showed it. I mean, I mean, I understand that everybody thinks that Horn what, didn't win the fight. Not well, everybody. Not, uh, well, you know. <laughs> Five independent judges who reviewed the fight say otherwise. Well, I'm just saying, pressure. If you pressure a softball, you take every angle away from the softball. The aforementioned Jeff Horn. There have been multiple reports and all but fully confirmed that we will see this spring on ESPN. Jeff Horn, who defeated Manny Pacquiao, take on one of the pound-for-pound -pound best fighters in the world, Terrence Bud Crawford, who's sitting about five seats to our left for the 147-pound belt that Horn won against Pacquiao. That will be this spring. Horn versus Bud Crawford at 147 for the belt.
talk a little more about our upcoming schedule to start to a huge year of top rank pop. You saw topping that list there February 16th, Ray Beltron against Paulus Moses, the former titleist Moses. Beltron, can he finally, finally win a world title? He's come up short, won in controversial fashion. That is coming your way February 16th. Shakur Stevenson, one of the prized undefeated prospects in the game, will also be on that card. And then March 10th, you saw right there, tremendous featherweight title fight. Oscar Valdez against Scott Quick. Lots of action coming up, world title fights on ESPN. Well, Jerwin, Jerwin and Kaha still doing the same thing you normally do. She using that stick, measuring him at times. He got his timing down now. He's landing his left hand at will. Gonzalez still doing the same thing, pulling straight back with his hands down. Getting caught on this station. This is the same round we've seen the entire fight. Pretty, I mean, pretty much, but <laughs> let me tell you something. Gonzalez is, is a tough, tough guy. If Jerwin goes down to that body, he breaks him down even more, okay? And he's not. He's not doing that. Nice right hook. He's hurt. He's hurt. Here he comes to the inside. Gonzalez goes down for the second time tonight. has three straight knockout wins in his title defense. Can he find his fourth straight? What a shot! My, oh, my, and Cajas! Here it is again. Jeremy steps right back, comes back with a straight left hand. Down goes the guys. Beautiful. Big Beautiful. left hand started things off in round number 10. That was the first knockdown.